एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू अनादर एपिसोड ऑफ मसाला चाय एंड चेस विथ निशा दिस इज अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माई बर्थडे एपिसोड यू नो वॉट आई वॉज थिंकिंग वॉट एम आई मिसिंग द मोस्ट दीज डेज सो सम पीपल आर मिसिंग मीटिंग फ्रेंड्स सम आर मिसिंग यू नो गोइंग आउट चिलिंग आउट वॉट एम आई मिसिंग एंड आई रियलाइज वॉट आई एम मिसिंग द मोस्ट दीज डेज is playing for india hence the choice of my shirt okay today i'm going to show to you all uh, a few games where i managed to swindle my stronger oppositions so let's get started this was from the kolkata open in 2009 i made my second international master norm in this tournament so i was white in this position against lalit babu he was at that time an international master but he was always a very strong player he was 2477 rated recently a few years back he has uh, won the indian national championship and uh, yeah so this position i i'm completely you know lost here i played queen f2 and okay i know i'm losing but what to do you have to you know at least play on for some moves and uh, this is my first masala chai moment so what do you do as black in this position how will you continue if possible try to see the next few moves so i hope you all must have spotted uh this nice move knight d f4 and after this lalit has a crushing position i'm just lost i played bishop into f4 knight into f4 and queen into f4 was played here now this is another masala chai moment what will you play as black in this position winning for black here but my opponent blundered in this position you know it happens if you are a stronger player if your opponent is not giving resistance in the full game you just want to finish off the game and go back home and you feel okay this is going to be a very smooth victory so i had not played this game uh, till this point well and i was really uh, completely crushed completely losing and i think my opponent uh, lost his sense of danger due to that and uh, he made the blunder bishop e5 but before that let's see the right move he could have played rook into e5 and i can almost resign in this position so for example if i take the rook he takes back if i play say i move my queen queen f3 he can go c3 and so i take he takes if you look at this position opponent has a strong bishop a strong pawn instead of a rook but my rook for example on a1 is completely hopeless right now and i have a very bad king so this is completely lost position for me i just could resign here but chess is a game of mistakes and my opponent played bishop e5 what did my opponent miss another masala chai moment for me what do you do as white right here try to calculate little bit so here came the shot Rook into e5. I think a shot which he missed. Rook into e5. Knight at six check. If you look at this, black does not have a move. For example, king f8 falls to queen f7. King h8 doesn't work because of 
knight into f7 there's a fork here and in the game after knight h6 my opponent played king g7 queen into f7 check king h8 what's the final move of this short and sweet combination queen into e8 rook into e8 knight f7 getting this fork my opponent played king g7 i took knight d6 and from here uh, the win came quite smooth okay i'm a piece up but i thought i still have some work to do but let's see rook e5 was played h4 rook e2 rook f1 so i'm threatening to penetrate rook f7 he played rook d2 knight e8 check king g8 can you find out the final move of the game i finished off the game with bishop d5 we see this you know these kind of combinations in books but here i got it the point is that uh, rook d5 fails to knight f6 and king h8 gets mated rook f8 here yeah. so after bishop d5 my opponent resigned and yeah i think uh, uh, you know it's very nice very interesting to get uh, to save a game with this kind of swindle this was the year 2015 grandmaster tejas bakde is white and i'm black this was from an international tournament in kolkata and if you look at this position i is black i'm completely lost it's a hopeless position for me last move my opponent played b7 and attacked my queen i have only one square to go to so i played queen d7 now this position as you can see white is completely winning suppose you are white and you consider two moves you have two ideas which you know you think of so one idea is rook into c6 queen into c6 queen into d2 rook into d2 b8 queen looks completely winning the next idea which you spot is b8 queen knight into b8 bishop into b8 piece up looks completely winning so in your own game you spot both these ideas and you feel okay this is winning and that is winning so you need to make a decision this is my masala chai moment which move will you go for here in a completely winning position my opponent went wrong blundered with rook into c6 so first let's see what white could have done i think the simplest move i mean okay b8 is winning for white b8 knight into b8 bishop into b8 he is a piece up i can resign i have nothing to do and knight g4 is coming in this position completely winning but this will bring you to the to another question that is why not knight g4 in the initial position yes knight g4 is completely winning but i wanted to give you two similar looking choices that's why i did not tell you about the third choice which is outright winning knight g4 in this position is completely winning uh, you know all the dark squares near black king are so weak this bishop on e5 is a monster everything is gone for black so knight g4 was obviously winning but if you had to choose between rook c6 and b8 they looked similar and that's why my question was what do you choose and uh, as we saw b8 was completely winning for white but he played rook c6 and i think he was attracted to the possibility of delivering mate after queen into c6 uh, let's see that variation so he was hoping for this queen d2 uh, very nice looking move i mean it is a nice move definitely rook into d2 b8 queen and finish so rook c6 was played but here my opponent missed something which i was hoping for this was my only way to escape and i was really hoping he plays rook into c6 
and I was also in some kind of time pressure. So I had seen the in-between move knight f3. This is very strong and now the game is almost a draw. Uh, it's very surprising that uh, black has escaped. My opponent played king g2. In this position there was uh, another idea for example king to f1 is interesting this could be a question what happens here and uh, black can simply take queen into c6 let's see the continuation b8 queen knight h2 check king g1 knight f3 check king h1 knight into e5 check knight g2 to cover up the check rook into b8 queen into b8 king g7 only move queen e5 f6 white looks better here white has a piece but i have two pawns and i don't think this position can be converted into a win i think almost impossible here at least very difficult i cannot find a way to win so after knight f3 other, we can have a look at one more variation actually king h1 is another possibility here queen into c6 b8 queen knight e1 check so suppose white says i go f3 now and after queen f3 white says king g1 but this is also a draw i just take queen into e3 king f1 queen f3 this leads to a draw so let's come back to the game continuation after knight f3 my opponent played king g2 i took queen into c6 he was very shocked he was very shocked very uh, you know very understandably he was shocked and here he played b8 queen uh, one very interesting thing to note that if white tries to go for a win from here say he tries king h3 he's even losing this position knight g1 check this was not played i'm just showing a continuation which was possible if white went wrong with king h3 so knight g1 king h4 h6 you know building this mating net b8 queen queen e4 check bishop f4 g5 and now if king g4 then we have queen f3 with the mate and if king h5 we have queen g6 king g4 mate with the pawn h5 obviously my opponent did not go for this he played b8 queen knight g5 check here he played king f1. Let's have a look at what happens for king g1. So king g1 means uh, simplest draw is knight h3. King f1, queen h1, king e2, knight g1. King e1, knight f3, king e2, etc. And after king f1, I played queen h1, king e2, queen f3 and a draw was a great here. I was very happy to survive a completely lost position against a grandmaster. We have to make things difficult for our opponents and give them resistance as much as we can. Sometimes things work, sometimes we are able to swindle the game. This was my game against grandmaster Rifat bin Sattar of Bangladesh. This was the Commonwealth 2007. It was a good tournament for me. I made an international master norm performance, but later on that norm was not counted due to some technical problems. I think it was not enough country or something, but I had a great tournament. I was unbeaten till this round. This was the eighth round. Rifat is white and I'm black. And here I played knight e6. And uh, this position is slightly preferable to black. And... Uh, the question to you is this, you're white here, what will you play as white? It's not like white to play or, uh, and win or something, it's just a problem on, you know, a question of decision making, what do you do? My opponent had only one minute on the clock in this position and he had to, yeah, I think, I think it was 40 move uh, time control at that time, I'm not exactly sure. So. Here, um, my opponent went wrong with bishop into d6. Actually, any other move in this position and the 
the position is completely manageable for white if white black has something it does very very little like very slight advantage to me almost kind of an equal position but uh, my opponent played bd6 can you find out what's wrong with this move short rook into d6 isn't this similar to the lalit game giving the rook i mean giving the exchange this is sometimes uh, difficult to spot during a game point is after rook into d6 i played queen e5 and my opponent resigned here this rook on d6 is under attack and uh, Okay, c5 can be answered with just knight into c5. The rook is the rook has to move, and there is, uh, you know, mate on h2. So after queen e5, if my opponent goes rook e d1, I have bishop into d6, and after queen into d6, there comes rook f1, and after rook into f1, you see the queen on d6 is hanging. So after queen e5, my opponent. resigned i mean this game it was not like i was losing or something but you can say from an almost equal position i managed to spot the small tactics which my opponent missed so bishop d6 rook d6 idea i mean queen e5 especially the continuation so i hope you all enjoyed the examples of swindle from my games even though if our opponents are strong even the position is lost we should not lose hope and we should keep trying and things might work out our way bye bye see you